fight Time to see what life takes me So I roll the dice Look up to no one else But yeah, I was shy I got real power Hebrew is a lie no, 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 the nation is the Israelites. Right. That's the nation. Just like you got on this side right here, you see 18 nations, and the top one is Israel. And so in the Bible, God created 18 nations. Right. right. He created the Elamites, the Syrians, the Arab, uh, uh, the Arabs, the so-called Ishmaelites, the Moabites, the Ammonites. The nation would be the Israelites. That's what we got. We come from the tribe of Judah. Right, everybody that you see on the left hand side, these are the colonizers, colonizers the name they gave us. On the right hand side, these are the tribes that each one of us make up. So you would be an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Right. Right, so if somebody asks you how you know you're an Israelite, what would you tell them? Like, how would you be able to prove to them, like the brother was, like the brother was telling you, how would you be able to, if somebody asks you, man, how you know you, because you got people, you got people in our homeland right now, right? You got the, you got people in our homeland right now that look like this, and they call themselves Israelis. The people that was just doing the marching, right? You got well, I mean, you got some people. You got brothers up here that's you know kind of kind of light. Brothers behind you, they kind of light. How was if somebody asked you like, man, how you know you? Because you got people in here. They say they they they, they Israel, they Israelis. They say that they Jewish. How would you be able to prove that you are Israelite? You gotta be melanin. No, you got some of these East Indians, they kinda like dark like you. Alright, so I'm gonna prove it to you. I'm gonna show you, brother. I'm gonna bring out these on give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse number 48. So I'm gonna show you one more time. You gotta go to the restroom. Alright. Well, Lord willing you come back. So listen to this, brother. These are some of the, so the Israelites, again, they got curses placed upon them. When you read Deuter Deuteronomy 28 uh, and 15 all the way down, or 16 all the way down up to 68, there's generation, actually all throughout the Bible, as I'm about to read and show you, all throughout the Bible, the Israelites have generational curses placed upon them. These things, these things, these things happen to our forefathers, and it's been happening, and it's happening to us to this day. So listen to this, read this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Bring it out. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies. The Lord said that the Israelites were going to have to serve their enemies. Which the Lord thy God shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. So the Lord said that the real, the real Israelites, they would have to go to their enemies in hunger and thirst and in nakedness. So do these people right here, do these people right here have to go to their enemies in hunger, thirst and in nakedness? Do you know who these people are? These people, these people own Black, you ever heard of Black Rock? Or Vanguard? You ever heard of uh, MGM when you watch the movie, you see MGM or Universal? Yeah, yeah. These people own that. These people own all the record labels. You ever heard of Clive Owen? Something like that. So these people actually own the entertainment industry. 
they own all the banks. The Federal Reserve, guess who owned the Federal Reserve? You said who? Guess what? Like the, like the brother said, the Rothschilds, man. Hey, they, they like to they like to they like to tell you that uh, Elon Musk is the richest man on earth. Hey, that's a lie. Why not? I thought a child. The richest man on earth is the Rothschilds, man. Black guard, Vanguard, right? The people that uh, the people that own economic the uh, economic form. These people are the, are your oppressors, are your enemies. Right. Right. So you can't you can't believe everything you hear, man. Right. These people will be the fake Jewish people. Right. Right. Right, these people are the ones that put you into slavery. Well, when you read these curses, guess what, brother? You have to go to them in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. Right. Right. They don't have to go to nobody else. You listening, brother? Yeah. Right. You don't. They don't. They don't have to go to nobody else. Right. We got to go to them. Right. Keep reading. And in the want of all things. Right. And in want of all things. Right, anything you want in this society, right? You wanna, you wanna damn, a, 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 like, like I was saying, a burger, water, clothes, a driver's license, a birth certificate, a car, a loan. You wanna get education? You gotta go to your enemy, right? They don't have to go to their enemies, man. Right, key reader. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And it says that the real Israelites will have yokes of iron on their neck. Right? And this don't fit them. They never had yokes of iron on their neck. That makes sense? Yeah. So this is a this is this is how you can prove to like, hey, they never y'all never had yokes of iron on y'all neck. Y'all don't have to go to nobody for food, want, clothing, hunger, right? Anything that you need in this society. Right? Read verse 54. Verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate. His eye shall be evil toward his brother. Right, so the Lord said that the Israelites will have an evil eye towards their brother. Right, these people don't have evil eyes towards each other. These these people, right now, they're bombing innocent people, man. Right, the, the, these 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 fake Jews, right, these, these are the Edomites. These are the Edomites that you read about in the Bible, number two on this list. Right, these are these are the people that I'm reading about. These would not be the they call that's why they call themselves Jewish. Right. Because they're acting like the real Jews. Right. right, key reader. His eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the white of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Right, so he said we was gonna have an evil eye towards our brothers. Right, these people again they don't have an evil eye towards their brothers and they don't have an evil eye towards their, their women. At all. Right, that, these curses only fit us. Right. Right. The ones, we're the ones that, you know, uh get the police called on us right. at three o'clock in the four four o'clock in the morning talking about domestic violence in the household. Right, this only happening to us, nobody else. Right, keep reading. Verse 55. It's like that's hard again. And toward the remnant of his children, which he shall lead. And we are going to have an evil eye towards the remnant, remnant of our children, which we're going to leave. And this curse again is only fitting us. We're the ones, the men, we're the only ones that's leaving our kids. Like the brother was saying, we go out for some milk, we go out to the gas station for some Kit Kats and some Snickers, and we never come back. This curse ain't fitting them, man. They're the ones that's, you know, they, they're the ones that's got, you know, damn nannies in the household. Right, we don't have nannies to watch over our kids, right? So these curses, again, they only fit when, you, when, you, when somebody asks you that, you can just say, hey, read the curses. Read the curses and do the running in the 28th chapter. That makes sense? Yeah. All right. You got any questions on it? Uh, I, I want to stress on that a little bit because um, I feel like, I feel like they, they have prophesied against us because after Jesus Christ, yeah. If we, if, I don't know if, if, if we believe that the Jewish people so you know you know how to say the Jews uh, uh betray Jesus Christ and they give them the cross and they kill them. Right, so the Rome, the Romans actually, you know, put Christ to death. Right. But you had some, you had some Jews that conspired in his death. He was dead. Right. right. So, so some of our people, you know, did want to, you know, uh, they didn't physically do it. But because but they, obviously, obviously, the Roman people are lying about we the Jews and saying that we had these 
and arrow, Jesus Christ, our whole people. No, we ain't never did. What you said? Say that one more time. They have this scenario. You that, said the Romans? Yeah, the Romans. Okay, you said they have this scenario that what? That thinking that we Jews, we killed Jesus Christ. Well, so we are the Jews, but we didn't. We didn't, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So okay. it to be clear. It's a country day. A country day that they don't want to accept the fact that they did it. Mm -hmm. They don't want to take the blame. So obviously they got power to tell the world that they ain't never did it in the world to know about it. And then they, they don't put it in history or get a history to it that's saying that they did it. Because in every history in the book, they will tell you that Jews killed their own people. Okay, I see what you Jesus Christ, right? right. So, but if you open up the Bible, you read, you know, different chapters, you read Matthew, the Gospels, right? You read about, you read Matthew, the 27th chapter, right? And, and, and different, and, and different uh, uh, books, how that the Romans, you know, put Christ to them. Yeah, they did, they right. did. So what was your question? So my question was, um, you know, um, I wanted to be clear to the word that we ain't never did kill Jesus Christ through the Jews. Because people got misunderstanding that going around saying that the Jews killed Jesus Christ. And that wasn't true. So right. how can we put end to that? Right. Looking out here thinking that we did something that we never did. And the right. Roman did this. The Roman did that. Right, right, right. What do you say? What do you say? what? said, uh, crucify and let his blood be upon our children. That's why I said the same thing. Right. But it was really the Romans. And it wasn't the Romans who really did it. I was just saying what this question was. So I was saying, how can we, yeah, how can we go into that? How can we, how can we, how can we overcome that? That's the word, overcome. How can we, how can we stop them from lying? Yeah, stop them from lying. I mean, and get a prophecy and get the true prophecy of the word. The word would look at us and be that the Jews, and said, oh, blah, blah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I mean, when you read this Bible, I mean, it, it reveals all things. So, I mean, again, once you read the Bible and it tells you, you read Matthew, give me Matthew uh, 27 and verse number 25. Let's, let's start at verse 24. It's Matthew 27, and I'm going to start at verse 23. Bring it out. And the governor says, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, let him be crucified. When Pilate so that he could prevail nothing. So this is Pontius Pilate, right? The governor, like he was just saying, read. But that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person, see ye to it. Then answered. So this is, it is a long account, and that's why we urge, you know, our people to read this book, read this Bible, because this is our, you know, this is our book. This is a long account. We just might, we might skip over a little bit, but we're going to read to you you know, um, bits and pieces of, of what happened. All right, keep reading. They answered all the people and said, his blood be on us and our children. So our, the, 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 the Jews that didn't believe, they said, let, they said let their blood be on us and our children because they wanted to put him to death. But we didn't actually physically do it, the Romans did. All right, keep reading. Verse 26. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor. Then the who? Then the, the soldiers, soldiers of the, of the governor. governor. So the soldiers of the governor. Took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plated a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off of him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. Right. So I mean, this it's a, it's a long, it's real long and lengthy. I mean, like I said, we 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 urge our people just to you know read read the accounts, right? Read the read the gospels, right? This is this is about our this is about our king, right? So you know again. You know, if you if you were to you know somebody were to ask you that, you know, you could just tell them to read that account because it, it is a long breakdown. Yeah, and what, then, what's the scripture? Uh, yeah. Matthew twenty seven. You can Matthew start at yeah, Matthew the twenty seven. You can start at twenty three, right? And then you can you know you got uh you got Mark you got Mark uh Mark Luke and John as well, right? You can read those. You know this those are um and, and they read differently because they're you know you read them in the eyes of these different of these different um apostles, right? So yeah, that's how you would prove it. I mean, this this that's why we say this Bible, man, this Bible is proof. 
you know, this Bible is, hey, buddy, you got two minutes for God? Hey, this Bible is proof that, you know, we're the Israelites. This Bible is proof, right, that, you know, the Lord is coming to save us. Right. And, and that's how you get faith, man. You know, you get faith by actually read. You, you listening, brother? Yeah, I'm listening. You actually, read, you, you actually gain faith by reading these scriptures and applying them to everyday life. Right. Right. You know, also, you know, faith is also, um, you know, um, doing things or believing in something that you've never seen before. But when you actually read the Bible and apply it, because a lot of people don't, they say they believe in the Bible, but they don't apply or do nothing in the scriptures. So when you actually read the Bible and apply it to everyday life, that's actually faith, man. A lot of people don't know that. But let's give me 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 7. And give me the book of Psalms chapter 49 and verse number 10. You know. right, so actually when you read the reading the Bible is actually showing that you have faith. And when you apply it, when you when you uh, when you implement what you're reading, that's actually showing that you got faith. Right, bring us up. The book of first Peter, chapter one and verse seven. Bring it out. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shai from Mashiach. So it says the trial of your faith. Meaning, you know, you're gonna go through things in life that's gonna, you know, try to, you know, it's gonna get you down. Right. Right, it's gonna bring you down. Right. Right, you're gonna have, you know, being that you, you know, coming in at this thing and you learning, Lord willing, you keep coming out here. You're gonna have spirits, you're gonna have people around you that's gonna, that's gonna bring you back out to the world. Right. Once you, give me Romans 6 and 6. Once you, once you come into this truth and you start reading, you got a Bible, brother? No. You don't have a Bible? No. We got an extra Bible? Uh, you do? Uh, hey, this is a Bible for you, brother. All right. All right. I'll pray some more time. So guess what? Time. So guess what, brother? I got a Bible too. Damn, brother. So guess what, brother? Once you start opening up that Bible and start reading it and applying it to everyday life, then that's when you have faith. Because again, if you don't have faith, you're not going. You're not going to do what it says. You're not actually. You know, faith is actually doing what it says do. Right. Because you get a lot of these. You get a lot of the Christian church. A lot of these pastors. You know, they say one thing, but they don't do it. Right. They don't do what the the book actually says. Meaning, they don't believe in it. If you, because again, we, this book was written over four thousand years ago. This book was written well over four thousand years ago. But you you have people that don't walk by what they, or you, you have people that don't believe. You got, you got people that don't believe in the chariots. Right. right you got people um, that don't uh, keep the feast days, that's in the Bible. Right. Right, you got, you got people that don't believe in Yahweh Shai. So if they don't believe, if, if they say they believe God and if they love God, they don't keep none. You got people that eat shrimp, crab, lobster, and pork. Right. You got people that eat pork that say that they believe in the Bible. So how is it that they eat pork? The Bible says don't eat pork, and they claim that they believe in the Bible or they have faith. How is that? How is it? That don't make sense. So actually, when you read this book and you apply it and you implement it in your everyday life, that's faith. Because these things, some of it had we never seen before. Actually, the stuff that's in this Bible, probably none of we probably never seen before. Right. But we actually come out here and we and we show our people and we believe it. And that's why a lot of us we have faith. We have abundance of faith. Why? Because we believe in the things that's in this Bible that nobody do. Well, we, we believe in the missiles that's right. coming to America. A lot of them. Missiles are actually coming to America. A famine is coming to America. Right. You see, all, look at all of these people. These people say that they believe in God, but they're not out here doing the work. They're not here teaching the people the truth right. of the Bible. Right. Right, we out here tell our people, hey, you gotta repent, keep God's commandments. Uh, Nobody's teaching that. Nobody. The Bible, the, the, the Lord actually separates people, but the other, the, these other nations actually trying to bring people together. They don't have faith, brother. They don't believe because the Bible said that we're supposed to be separate from right. these other nations. Right. They have no faith. Read that. It's the book of Romans chapter six, verse six. Yeah. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. So it says, knowing this, that the old man is crucified with him. So the old man is uh, you being a fornicator, 
an idolater, you smoking weed, you getting drunk, right? That's the old man. But when you read this Bible and keep God's commandments, that's you taking off that old stinking garment that you wore, right? The old man is you doing the things of this world, right? And you gotta put on the new man. What is the new man? You actually going home, read the Bible. reading the Bible and doing what else? And putting it to use. And putting it to use. Right. Applying the words that it says. Keeping God's commandment. And applying it. If somebody, and, hey, we get counsel, man. That's another way of having faith. When we read these scriptures in the different accounts that's in this Bible, we've never seen these accounts before. But when we apply them to everyday life, when brothers are sick, when brothers need, uh, 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 need to be lifted up, when brothers can't pay their bills, when brothers is getting... Um, uh, uh, getting their uh, lights cut off, right. their heat cut off. Right. They can't make it to work. They right. they they car got shut down. They get they car got stolen. And we got this different accounts in the Bible to tell our brothers, hey man, our forefathers went through the same thing. Right. Hey, you can get through this. You can overcome it. But you have to when you apply these when you apply these life accounts and these messages. That's when you start to believe and get faith. And you need that to get salvation to get the kingdom of heaven. Finish reading that. Right. It says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That the what? That the body of sin might be destroyed. So that old man is you doing whatever you wanted to do in this world. Right? When, 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 hey, we was all once in this world. That old man was just, hey, we did whatever we wanted to do. We smoked weed from sun up to sundown. We was getting drunk, right? We was fornicating, right? We was robbing and stealing. Right. Hey, that was, you said what? Yeah, no discipline. Hey, we had no discipline. We had no patience. We had no obedience. That's that old man. That's you not, that's you not having faith. Now, if you want faith, you got to actually, like I was just saying, you got to actually read it, apply it, put it to use. Right? Implement what the word says and actually putting it into practical use. Everyday knowledge, man. Again, this is about you said what? What I think about? Come here, come here, come here. Come here, brother. How are you asking me a question and keep rapping? You think it's a game, man. Is that the sister from uh, that I talked to? Right. The German? That is. Well, yeah. So, so if that, does that make sense, brother? Right. Uh, give me uh, Psalm chapter 49 and verse number 20. Give me Psalm chapter 49 and verse 20. 49 and 20. And give me 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 5. The book of Psalm chapter 49 and verse 20. Man that is in honor and understand of not is like the beast that perish. 49 and 20. Songs. Eleven. Let me see. When the is here, it's 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 Give me uh, give the book of Second Corinthians chapter one and verse five. Give me Second Corinthians chapter five and verse number Second Corinthians four and eight. Right, because we're gonna suffer in this truth, man. Right, we're gonna suffer through different things that's going on in our everyday lives, man. We, we, we lose our wife, we lose our wife, we lose our mother, we lose our kids, we lose our job. Right, we get in the rut with different car situations, and we're gonna have to suffer, man. And your and, and your trial with, through this suffering is actually gonna prove your faith. Can you read it. So our consolation also abounded in Hamashiach. So your consolation, the consolation is at the end of the day is the kingdom of heaven. Right, this is what we striving for. We actually striving for to get the kingdom of heaven. Because this place that you're walking on right now is not the kingdom of heaven. This is their kingdom, and this is where they in, in, in right, uh, this is where they in rulership. But the kingdom of heaven is where we gonna be in rulership. They gonna be at the bottom, and we gonna be at the top. Right, we try, hey, we get tired of suffering, man. We get, we get tired of seeing our people in the oppressed state. Right. You know, suffering. Right. Right, got the drugs in the community, guns right. in the community. Right. Right, killing each other. Right. Right, the women out here, out know, twerking and not taking care of the, uh, the, their kids. Right. They all partying and getting drunk all different types of the night. Right. 
right? We out here telling our people, hey, there's something better on the other side. That's the kingdom of heaven. Right. Where these other nations that's out here marching for peace and and, and, and marching for for their home, for our homeland, to stop getting bombed. Say, hey, hey, it's not for them. Hey, sister, you got two minutes for God. Two minutes, sister. Two minutes. Sister. Two minutes. Probably your stomach. And, 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 and that's what we, we we try to tell our women. It's like, hey, they're not gonna be dressed like that in the kingdom of heaven. At all. The Lord ain't gonna allow. You think the Lord looking at that and allowing that? At all. Hell no, man. Burn. Burn. Keep reading on that. Verse six. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation. It is for what? It is for your consolation. The Lord said, whether you be afflicted, man, it is for your consolation. That cut the prize is the kingdom of heaven. So, hey, brother, don't get discouraged. Hey, you're going to get afflicted, man. You're coming into this thing, you're going to go through some stuff, man. Right? If you're, not, if you're not already, man. We the Israelites, man. Right. These these curses are on us. That's why we being afflicted, man. Right. So you got to understand, when you when you, when you you go through your afflictions, man, open up this Bible. Hey, call a brother up, man. See that? Right? Hey, we're going to be able to help you out, man. We're going to read these precepts to you, and it's going to help. It's going to uplift you, man. Right. It's going to allow you to fight another day in this hell that we in, man. Right. These people, hey man, they love it here, man. See that? Hey, they they want they don't want this place to go. They, don't. they think that this place is gonna continue forever. Right. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. What you got? Give me Psalms 49 and 11. Right. They think this place is gonna continue forever. They think that Joe, uh, that Joe, that Donald Trump is gonna save them. They think that uh, all these different, uh, 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 all these different uh, rulers and, and and kings of the world, and hey, they think that they they kingdom is gonna last forever. But yet, little do they know that once God shows and people start waking up and teaching this Bible how it's supposed to be taught, they don't understand that America will be destroyed. Right, bring this up. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 49, verse 11. Yo. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. So their inward thought is that their houses, where they dwell at, where they live in, all these different countries, these continents that they're in, and they think that it's going to continue forever. Right. But the Bible prophesies the downfall of every kingdom. And this is the last final captivity that we in. And the Lord said, hey, all we got to do is come out here and prophesy. That's all we got to do. And that's why you see all the stuff that's going on in America, in this world. You see the flood, uh, floods. I don't know if you're paying attention to the news and what's going on geopolitically. But it's a massive amount of floods going on. Fires in, in, in New York and in California. Earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes. Like all these things is happening because we are, we just come out here and teach the Bible. Right, you hear a lot of um, a lot of uh, sedition. You hear a lot of protesting. Right, protesting was prophesied in the Bible. That's how we know we in the end. Right, keep reading. It says, which is effectual in the adoring of the same sufferings which he also suffered, or whether we be comforted. It is for the your consolation and salvation. And, for what? And, and salvation. salvation. For your consolation and salvation. Again, that's what we want. We want to be what is salvation? Salvation is actually being saved from these wicked people, man. Right. The people that put us in slavery, put us in chains. Right, we want to be saved from, from the missiles and the famine that's coming to America. Right. Did you know that famine was coming here? Right. A famine is actually coming to America. It's not gonna be no more food, man. Right. It's not gonna be more no more food in this land, no more water, man. The Lord is only gonna feed the servants of the Lord that's keeping his commandments. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? The Lord is only gonna feed. Hey sisters, y'all got two minutes for God? Come learn your nationality for two minutes. Uh, come here. It's only gonna take two minutes to learn who y'all are. Put a coat on. Right. I wonder why they get. I wonder why they cold, man. They got the damn hands in their pocket, man. Legs, cold. Damn legs open, so open. Give me First Timothy five and six. Give me First Timothy five and six. No, no. Damn. What's the book of First? It's First Timothy chapter five, verse six. Yo. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Read that again. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead yeah. while she liveth. You down here, man. You down here trying to look, look at the bean and and look at all these Edomites on the roller uh, uh, ice rink. Hey, you living in pleasure, man. The Lord right. said you living in pleasure like this. Hey, you you already dead, man. Right. Especially on the on the Sabbath day, the Lord's holy day. Our, our women oh. just out here damn naked, man. Got no damn tutus. Hey, brother, you got two minutes for God? Come on your nationality, brother. Two minutes. Two minutes, brother. Right, give me Acts 3 and 23. 
Right, give me the book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 23. Give me the book of Romans chapter 11, verse number 7. Acts chapter 3, verse 23. Oh. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed. Right, so the Lord said every soul that don't come hear the words of the Lord, they're going to be destroyed, man. But at some point, if Lord willing, they get it on the other side somewhere else, they, they hear this word. But the Lord said at some point, if you don't hear God's words, you will be destroyed, man. Family, y'all got two minutes for God? Two minutes, sister. All right, read this, Romans 11 and 7. It's the book of Romans chapter 11 and verse 7. Bring it out. What then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it. Right, so the elect have obtained this knowledge, man. Hey, we've been seeking for this truth, man. Right? That's how we got into this thing. In some way, some point in time, we've been seeking for the Lord, man. What is out there? What is our purpose? What are we here for? A lot of our, a lot of people don't ask themselves, man, what are they here? Why they, why they, what's their existence on this earth? People just want to, you know, again, people just want to do what they want to do, man. Right? You can't do what you want to do. The heathens can do what they want to do. Right, the heathens can you know, march up and down stolen land and rape, rob, murder, and pillage, and, and lie. Hey, they can do that. But the Lord gave us laws, statutes, commandments to keep, to keep, and to, to, to govern. The Lord gave us commandments to govern ourselves and to govern these other nations. Right, to tell them how to get in order, man. In the kingdom of heaven, we're going to tell them how to get in order, man, whether they like it or not. Right. We're going to rule them with a rod of iron if they don't want to get in order. Right. Right. What, uh, what I had you hold it? Oh, keep reading on that slide. All right. It says, but the election hath obtained it. But the who? But the election hath obtained it. Hey, brother, you got two minutes for God? Two minutes, brother. Come on, your nationality. Both of y'all, man. What's your, hey, what's your nationality? What's your nationality on your father's side? Your nationality, your ethnic, your race? Yeah, what's your nationality? Hey, y'all believe in the Bible? Hey, I got good news for y'all, man. Y'all ever, you see yourself on the side right here? You ever seen this, you ever seen this before? Israelites, you ever heard of the Israelites in the Bible? What y'all know about the, what you know about the Israelites? Okay, so the Israelites, they're God's chosen people. They're the ones that can get salvation, repentance, and the kingdom of heaven. Contrary to what you've been told about popular belief, right? We're the ones, the people on the sign right here, we're the ones that can get the kingdom of heaven. It's not for everybody, right? The Israelites are God's chosen people. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6, right? If you didn't know this, brother, this is not a religion. This is who you are by blood. Again, if you believe in the Bible, you're not going to find the terms Mexican, Latino, African-American, black, None of those terms, none of these terms right here on the left hand side, they're not in the Bible. Why are these things out here, but they're not in the Bible? Right, so you gotta ask yourself, who are you? Because the God right here, God created 18 nations of people. These are the 18 nations he created. But you hear about the Israelites. The Israelites, they walked through the Red Sea with Moses. And what, it, and what did Moses do? He split the Red Sea for them because they were in bondage under Pharaoh and the Egyptians. So again, Moses didn't split that Red Sea for everybody. He had other people that were coming, actually coming against us. Even throughout the whole Bible, it's Israelites, right? And they had enemies or people that oppressed them. The Israelites, they're the one that need to redeem. They're the ones that needed to be redeemed, to be saved from somebody. And then you had the other people that was always oppressing them, always putting them into slavery. Right. So the Israelites are God's chosen people. Like we were, we're gonna prove this to you out the Bible. You are a special, y'all are special people. Y'all are kings and princesses on this earth, kings on this earth, and our women are princesses. And we have to tell our people that because our people just think that, you know, our heritage and culture doesn't mean anything. We just think that basketball, baseball, rapping, entertainment, that's our lifestyle. But no, actually keeping God's commandments is our lifestyle, that's our heritage. Right. And if we want to get the kingdom of heaven, we have to keep the God's commandments. So bring this up, Deuteronomy this up. Real quick, I'm gonna be with y'all real quick. Look at Deuteronomy chapter seven and verse six. Because thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. So this is Moses speaking to the Israelites. He said, we're a holy men and separate people unto the Lord our God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So out of the Bible it said that we're above everybody on the face of this earth. That's why if you look at this sign right here, brother, look at this sign and what does this sign have, have in common? With all these people on the left-hand side, the Israelites, what do they have in common? 
There's two things. Take a stab at it. Well, yeah, they're minorities. That's, they're minorities. Read these names on the left. This is what the, the colonizers, our slave or, or, or oppressors called us. But this is what the tribe that we come from. We make a one nation of people, which would be the Israelites, the people who Moses freed out of Egypt. So what do these people have in common? Don't they do things better than everybody? Basketball, baseball, uh, baseball soccer, singing, dancing, entertainment, like LeBron James. Uh, you ever heard of Messi? What's his name? What's his name? Ronaldo Messi. Uh, what about, uh, you ever heard of Floyd, uh, Floyd Mayweather and uh, uh, Alvarez, Canelo? Those guys, don't they dominate the sport that they in? Serena Williams, Venus Williams, right. track and field, right. Michael Johnson, right. inventions, creativity, right. creation, the brilliant minds. But on the flip side, what else do they have in common? How do how we live it across the world, from state to state? from country to country, from city to city. How do these people live? You said what? Yeah, I mean, everybody's, well, a lot of nations are working, but like, in the, on a deeper scale, like how, how do we live compared to, how do we live, how do these people live compared to everybody else on this side? Yeah, you got the white man, you got the East Indian man, you got the Assyrians, you got the Arabs, Chinese, Japanese. Like, it, like put it like this. They, we got we in our neighborhood, right? Who do we go to if we want to get food, water, clothing, birth certificate, death certificate, a loan, a bank account? Who do we got to go to versus who do they go to? Who do, who do you go to to go to school? What, what school system? Do we have, do we own the schools, like colleges? No. no. Yeah, we, we got a little bit of colleges. We got HBC, HBC. I mean, but we don't, they, really. we don't really, we don't own it though. Yeah. So they, no, no. So you got, you got, you, you got the so-called white man. He funds those schools for us, but we don't like Morehouse and, and um, uh, what's the other one, Morehouse and- Jackson uh, State. Jackson no, State. what's the, what's the female Spelman. one? Spelman. Spelman. Yeah, we, so, our people yeah. go there, but we don't actually own it. Right. When you when you when you go to these schools, what curriculum or what what are you learning in these schools? With that, with that. Even with Kanye West, when he was like, "Well, I'm Jew too," and what they do to Kanye, they start to they start to make him make him start talking. Right. They try to make him start talking. Shut up, man. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 15. I'm gonna show you something, brother. This is this is what you call forbidden knowledge. They don't want you to know this truth. They don't want you to know your history. Right. Your history is actually in this Bible. Your history will be that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, and your history will be that you will be an Israelite from the tribe of Issachar. And I'm gonna prove that to y'all, brothers. And this again, this is not a religion. This is who y'all descend from. Y'all descend from mighty kings and rulers that's in the Bible. That's, hey, you can say it from a so-called black man named Jesus Christ, man. You come, Jesus Christ came from the, uh, the same tribe that you come from. I mean, you come from the same tribe that Jesus Christ came from, which would be from the tribe of Judah. You would be the real Jew. These people, that's why they call themselves Jewish, because they're acting like the real Jews. And they prosper because we were supposed to be the ones at top, but we broke God's commandments. So the Lord gave them these things on the left-hand side to be at top, and that's why they're rulers, that's why they have everything, because we were supposed to have everything. The Lord promised us the riches, the glory, but because of our disobedience, he, he said, you know what? I'm gonna give it to these oppressors, and I'm gonna let them move y'all behind. Right. So bring this out. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Okay. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So this is Moses speaking to our forefathers. Moses said, hey, if y'all don't hearken, if y'all don't hear, read, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So if y'all, Moses said, if y'all, my forefathers, if y'all don't keep God's commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, all these curses are come are going to come upon y'all and y'all seeds and overtake y'all. I'm going to read y'all three curses and these are identifying markers to prove to you that we're the Israelites, God's chosen people, the ones that he set above all nations on this earth. Read verse 16. Verse 16, cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. I was saying, what people are cursing in every major city, LA, uh, Baltimore, New York, St. Louis, what people, you said who? 
Atlanta. These people, right? These people are cursed. They say, cursed shall thou be in the city, and what else? Hey, cursed shall thou be in the field. What people are cursed in the field? What people are cursed in the field? The cotton field, the sugar cane field. Right, right. Got the damn Northern King, the so-called Hispanics, Native Americans. They were cursed in the strawberry field. They were cursed in the field. Look at the Native Americans in the field. Right, in the field. And then at the bottom, you got them in the field. And get it, and again, you got the damn, this is for you, brother. You got the damn eagle in the field because the damn Spaniards came over here with that sign with the eagle. See that? Well, this is this is prophecy letting you know that we're the Israelites. Right. Right, read verse 48. Verse, verse 48. Get out! Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy. For the Lord said, for breaking his commandments, you're going to have to serve your enemies. Right. The people that put us in slavery, the people that stole your land, the Lord said, we're going we to have to serve them for breaking his commandments. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. The Lord sent them against us for breaking his commandments. Not because they better than us or stronger than us. It's because of our disobedience, because we're his kids. He's punishing us, not all of them. Read. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. Well, that's why we have to go to them for hunger, thirst, the clothes on your back. We don't own none of these things. We don't own the textile mills. We don't own the water filtration plants. Right? We don't own the schools. Can you read it? And in want of all things, he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And the Lord said, the oppressor was going to do this. 4,000 years ago, this Bible was written. And yet prophecy has been, been fulfilled. He said he was going to put a yoke of iron on your neck. And this happened to you too, our forefathers, your forefathers too, put a yoke of iron on your neck until you've been destroyed. How are you destroyed? You're not calling yourself an Israelite no more. Why are you calling yourself Hispanic, Mexican, right, Latino? Everything but an Israelite from the tribe of Israel. Everything but an Israelite right. from the tribe of Judah. Right. They, they got you mentally enslaved, right, just going through the processes in, in America, just going to school. And you're not even thinking about being why I call myself black. Look at your jacket. Right, that's black. You're not black, you brown. Why well, I call myself five different nationalities, man? You call yourself colored, right, Negro. Right, hey, how, how is it that these terms, these, our national, uh, these nationalities are older than our grandparents? It don't make sense. It don't make sense for our nationality to keep switching up every 20 to 25 years because they don't want you to know. They don't want, they don't want this message to get out. Kyrie was saying it, Kanye was saying it. Right. I think G. Herbo was saying it. Right, Nas. Right, Nas, you said Nas. Uh, KRS One, Ice Cube, DMX. Hey, DMX. Hey, they don't want you. D Rose. Yeah. D Rose. Yeah, D Rose had a little. I thought he was a more. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but anyway, these things that they don't want you to know, brother. Right? These curses. I'm bringing these curses up to prove to you that you are Israelite from the tribe of Judah, from the tribe of Israel. This is the last curse. But again, these curses I'm reading to you is to prove to you, not to deter you. You're like, damn, I'm cursed. No, that's not the end all it, the end all be all. The end all be all the end all be all is for you to come back to God, start keeping his commandments, so we can receive salvation. Because we tired of going to work, man. The Lord said once we start to wake up and come back to our true biblical nationality, then America will be destroyed and our kingdom will be placed next. And our kingdom will be the kingdom of heaven and it's only for us. Well we gonna be at the top and they're going to be at the bottom, the people that put us in captivity. So this is the last curse to prove to you that we're the Israelites. Verse 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord said he was going to bring us into another Egypt. Now again, when we was in Egypt, we was in slavery and bondage under Pharaoh. Moses said, let my people go. He didn't say he let everybody go. He said, let my people go. And so when he said, let my people go, Moses parted the Red Sea, and we fled and we left out of Egypt, which would mean captivity or bondage. So in this context, when it says, I will go, uh, we're going to go into another Egypt, that's talking about slavery or bondage. So we're going to read it from the top. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. What people went into slavery on slave ships? Right? And the Native Americans too, they came over here on slave ships as well. Right, you, uh, the Native Americans, the so-called Native Americans, the, uh, the Northern Kingdom, we call it the Northern Kingdom. So the Puerto Ricans, all the way down, they were here first. Right, you, you, you had the, you had the, you had the land of, uh, you had the, uh, the land of so-called Hispaniola. You had the land of Mexico. You even had the land of uh, uh, New, uh, uh, California. The whole, this whole, this whole United States, y'all had that. 
uh, 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 Dominican Republic, Cuba, right? Jamaica. Y'all had y'all was here first. Y'all had all of that, but the the Spanish came with this flag, that red nasty flag, and they and they came with Christianity in that cross to colonize y'all, and that's why y'all speak Spanish. You ever wonder why you speak Spanish? Exactly. That's, right, right. So our, our native tongue is actually Hebrew. Right, we speak Hebrew, brother. That's your right. native tongue. Right? That's why if you go to New Mexico, you go to New Mexico, they get what is called the Los Decalog Stone. And, it, and you can look this up. This is the Paleo Hebrew, right, in New Mexico. Right. And who was here for, who was here first? The Native Americans. Right. Right, so keep reading on that. Uh -huh. But go on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I speak of the people. The same way Moses said it was gonna happen, it happened. It happened. Thou shalt see it no more again. We haven't seen Israel. That's our homeland. That's where we're from. Right? That region right there where they're bombing. Yeah, I know, I know. Hamas and all that. Hamas, Hezbollah, the Gaza Strip. Hey, that's ours, man. Right. The Lord promised us that land. The Lord said once the real, give me, hold that, give me, hold that, give me, I'm going to show y'all something. Give me Jeremiah 30 and verse number 10, verse number 3. The Lord said when the real Jews go back there, it's going to be peace and it's quiet. It's not peace and quiet over there. They all were there bombing right now. It's a, it's a, they was just marching, the Palestinians was just marching because it's a war going on right there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show y'all this real quick. I'm going to show y'all something real quick. Read this. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 3. Bring it out. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord. That I will bring again the captivity okay. of my people. This is real important. We, we, right, we for lo, the days come, saith the Lord. The Lord said, The days are going to come, saith the Lord. That I will bring again the captivity of my people. They said, The captivity of my people, because those people, these people never been into slavery. Read. Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave. He's he gonna cause them to return to the land that I gave them. That I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Right, keep reading. For thus said the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now and see whether a man do a travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man? Verse 10, therefore fear thou not. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar. The Lord says he's gonna save us from afar. It's like it. And thy seed from the land of their captivity. And this is the land of our captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest. And shall be what? And shall, shall be, be in rest. rest. When we go back to Israel, we're gonna be in rest. Read. And be quiet. And it's gonna be what? And, and be, be quiet. quiet. It's gonna be quiet when we go back. And none shall make him afraid. So the Lord said, when we go back there, it's gonna be peaceful and it's gonna be quiet. Right. That's how you know they're not the real Jews. Right. Does that make sense? So keep reading on that. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. The Lord said we're gonna be uh, sold into our enemies, and we know that we were sold. No other nation, no other nation of people were sold. Right, keep reading. I see you with the dress on, sister. All praise to the most high. <laughs> For bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. And the Lord said, No man is going to buy us, meaning no man is going to redeem us but the Lord Himself. So, if breaking God's commandments as Israelites put us at the bottom, how do we get back at the top? How do we get the Lord to come back to save us from this hill that we have? Because in the kingdom of heaven, we ain't going to be, we ain't gonna be working. We're going to be at rest. Right. Or we're going to be ruling these other nations and, and getting them in order and tell them, hey, we, they got to keep off these days. Right. So, what do we got to do? What's the what's the end all be all? Give me Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 1. I'm gonna show y'all what y'all gotta do, because I know y'all y'all gotta go. And this is very important for us to receive salvation. Right? Salvation is only for the people on this sign, not for everybody. Read this. It's Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass. If thou will not hearken, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. It says, if thou shalt hearken, if thou shalt hear. 
to a diligent to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. This is to observe to do all his commandments. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. What? Above all nations. 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 Above all so that's what we got to do as Israelites. We got to keep God's commandments. So I'm going to give y'all commandments that's outside of the 10 because I'm pretty sure y'all heard about thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not uh, commit adultery and, and, and murder. I'm going to give y'all a couple commandments that y'all probably don't know about or y'all probably struggling with that y'all got to start keeping so we so y'all can be saved because a famine is coming and America will be destroyed by missiles. I'm going to give y'all three commandments. All right, y'all got time for three commandments? All right, Leviticus 11 and 7, y'all know what I want. Uh, Exodus 31 and 14. Y'all smoke weed? We gotta stop smoking weed. That's the sin according to the Bible. Now, if you sick or you dealing with an ailment, you want to pray to God first and take away that, but, you know, weed is the most, the weed is meant to be, to be eaten and not to be smoked. That's right. why you smoke, I mean, that's why you cough. Like that cough, I mean, that smoke is meant for you to not to be going in your lungs. That's your body telling you that it ain't supposed to be going. Just like when you're in a burning building, you coughing, because that's telling you that you ain't supposed to be in that burning building with all that damn fire. Leviticus 11, verse 7. And the swine. And the swine yeah, that's what the damn slave masters you to fetch, uh, fetch tools in slavery. They say, and the swine. Though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he chose not to cut. He is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. And their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. This is sin for our people to eat pig. Right? That's why our people got uh, high blood pressure, diabetes. We struggle We struggle with these things because the Lord said it's a sin. So, y'all, uh, would y'all be willing to put down pork for God? This is what actually... Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to eat all, all that pork. Okay, that's all. So if, have you ever ate it before? So you still have to repent. You gotta say uh, Yahweh. That's the Father's name. You gotta say Yahweh. So, yo, this is how you do it, man. It's a lot, but y'all can handle it. I'm gonna give y'all a flyer before y'all go. On the right hand side is the Father. Uh, on the right is the Father. His name is Yahweh, and the Son's name is Yahweh. Shot in the Hebrew. We got the 22 characters. You can take a picture if you need to, but you gotta repent. You gotta say Yahweh, and then Yahweh. Shot. I didn't know that eating pork. Shrimp, crab, lobster was a sin. Uh, fornication was a sin. Please forgive me and he'll wipe your, your sins away clean. Right, Q. Uh, verse 8, verse 9. No. He shall ye eat of all that are in the water. So this is what you can and cannot eat that come out the water. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not been to scales in the seas and in the rivers and all that are moved in the waters and of every living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. Oh, I said, if you don't have fins and scales that come out of the rivers and the seas and the waters, it's an abomination. So what are some of the things that people eat that don't have fins and scales that the Lord said don't eat? Real life. Right, right. Crab, lobster, shrimp, right? These don't have fins. Right, these are these are bottom feeders, right? They eat the poop and the everything, all of the filth that's uh, in the ocean's floor. That's why, you know, they when they take the damn, the shrimp, crab, and lobster out, that's when the water gets filthy. So, so they, they eat all the algae. Yeah, yeah, they, they eat all the filth, yeah, right? All, uh, yeah, all the dirt. All the dirt. Right. And when you eat all of that dirt, I mean, when, you, when they eating all that dirt, you putting that dirt and those toxins, inside your body. Right, right. And sometimes when you crack these, the crag legs open, I've seen it where they got these worms that come out of them. Yeah, so you gotta make sure, brother, you don't, you wanna stay, you only eat, you got, man, you got red snapper you can eat, you got salmon, you got bluegill, right, you got perch, you got walleye. So you got, you got, you got fish, that, you got some good fish, man, they got fish and scales, you don't wanna stay, y'all eat shrimp, crab, and lobster? You eat that, morisco? Yeah, you gotta repent. That's all right, brother, we all used to eat it. But now, but now we come into the knowledge of this truth that you were Israelite. You got to repent and put it down for good. You got a point? I was going to say, they even got on YouTube where they got certain videos where they'll do a comparison. You have a clean fish bowl and a dirty fish bowl. And they'll put the fish that's made to clean it like catfish or the shrimp. And they'll eat up all the algae. But the algae that's in that bowl does not even know that those animals are designed for that filtration system. So if you put all that's in you, then that's what's in your body. And we can say an example of our team. In the ocean, animals, they use the bathroom, you know, they take poop. 
these other animals that come and gotta eat the food to clean it up to get the water to get those like same the animals, they're those same animals that clean up that poop, the shrimp, the lobster, you know, you put that in your body, so you don't want to be humble just eating animals that's known for eating the poop. And that's why, again, that's why a lot of the abuela and our grandfathers and grandmothers, that's why they're the ones that get gout. You get the feet that's blowing up because all of that, that buric acid is just building up and sitting in their feet. And that's poison. Right? So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta put that stuff down, man. You gotta repent from that. But this is the last one. It's the book of Exodus chapter 31 verse 13. You know? Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep. The Lord said the Sabbath day this you gotta keep. Friday sundown, Saturday sundown, that's the Sabbath day, not Sunday. Right. If you're going to church, man, stay out of the Christian church, they're gonna do nothing but lie to you and pimp you out your money. Right. right? So the Lord said that the Sabbath day ye shall keep, so I'll tell you when it is. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doeth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Every one that defileth it shall surely be put to death. They say if you defile the Sabbath day, you're gonna be put to death. That's why a lot of our people Friday night, Saturday night, right, you drive home. Y'all from here, y'all from Chicago? South Carolina, so a lot of a lot of odd people, even in South Carolina on Fridays and Saturdays, you might see a lot of uh, car wrecks, a lot of people get gunned down, shot at, oh, yeah. on Friday. Same thing, right. The Lord said because we're not keeping the Sabbath day, the Lord is punishing us. Can you read it? For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from being from among his peoples. Like Verse 15, six days may work be done. You got six days to do all that you gotta do, right? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, to Friday, sundown. But in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. So the seventh day of the week is Saturday. It's a day of you just rest, read. Holy to the Lord, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. So the Lord said that twice. I mean, he's put emphasis on, man, this is the Sabbath day. He hollowed it. He, he, he created the world in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. How much more his people? Right? How much more his people to rest? So the Lord said from Friday sundown to Saturday right now is the Sabbath day. I know y'all didn't know that, but actually buying on the Sabbath day is the same. So the Sabbath day is, on the Sabbath day it entails no buying, no selling, no cooking, no cleaning. The Lord just wants you to rest. Open up your Bible. Hey, this is your heritage right here, man. Give me some right 24 and 23. This is your heritage. This is who you are by blood, man. All right, so you y'all get Bibles? Yeah, I got, I got, I got, I got. Hey, man. So now when you want, now when you read, you got to understand that you are an Israelite, that you descend from these people. And now it's going to come with, it's going to look, it's going to make sense when you read it, how the Lord is always defending us, but then he's always destroying the other nations. You got to be like, damn. How come they never taught us this? The Lord always dealing with us, but then he destroyed. That don't make sense how God loves everybody if he always dealing with us and destroying the other nations. All right, so y'all got to keep the Sabbath day. No buying, no selling, no cooking, no cleaning. And what day is that? From Friday sundown to Saturday. So the, when the sun go down, the Sabbath day is over. Friday when the sun go down, the Sabbath day starts. So from evening to evening is, is one day. There ain't no buying on the Sabbath day, no cooking, no cleaning. Make everything you gotta make. Like a salad, you can make a salad, you can make a smoothie, a sandwich, right? But on the Sabbath day, hey, it's a Lord, it's a day for the lead to rest. Come back to who you are, right? According to the Bible, so we can get up out of here, man. Because the kingdom of heaven is for us. Right. Y'all know, y'all know what Christ looked like according to the Bible, right? What would you look like? What the Bible describe? What? You said what? A white man. So what the Bible describing that? No. Yeah, bro. So you do you read your Bible? You read it? Yeah, brother. That's what he looked like. He looked like he, he looked like this, man. Turn that side around. Turn that side around too. Yeah, he look. He, he's describing. We got a little something happen right here, but he was looking. We gotta get a new sign. But uh. We got a new uh, uh, slide. He would look more like this. Right? You got the white woolly hair, the bronze, and that image right there all the way down. The, the image to the left. Right? So before y'all leave, man, what's y'all nationality? Yeah. According to, uh, what, what, what you would call yourself now? 
Because what you was taught, what you was taught in this world is a lie. Right. Yeah, brother. That's right, brother. Yeah, brother. You're not, you're not, you're not African American, though. That's you're not black. You gotta understand why they keep, why they keep switching it up. Right. Why they keep switching it up on you? This is the name that God gave you because you fit these curses. You fit these curses too, brother. So y'all would be what? What's your nationality? So that's the tribe you come from. But the the nation. Is an Israelite, right? From the tribe, because we all make up. They try to divide us, try to make us think that we, you know, the same. But we will be Israelites from the tribe of Judah, and you from the tribe of Issachar. Right? Does that make sense to y'all? Hey, man, what you Mexico, uh, Mexicans, Black, African American, colored Israelite. Y'all gotta throw that. Plus, you got the man. This is something when you go home, you gotta, you gotta thank God for man. Thank you for letting me be here. Because like, everybody, this, this ain't nothing that you can just convert to. Right. This is who you are by blood. Right. That makes sense? All right, man. All right, be smooth, man. All right.